Good Morning Britain campaign to get the BBC to reverse its outrageous decision to uh, make pensioners over 75 now pay the TV licences they haven't had to pay for in 20 years. Dame Joan Collins has been in touch. It's absolutely appalling. She said it's unbelievable that the BBC would penalise a group of people who basically saved us during the war. I'm disgusted. Well, we spoke to Scottish Conservative leader Ruth Davidson uh, this morning already. You're the first person to sign up to the campaign, uh, Ruth Davidson. Um, should the government step in to help out or is this solely the BBC's responsibility to perform a U-turn? Well, the government negotiates every set of years with the BBC about how it's going to fund its programmes. And uh, as far as I'm aware, the BBC at no point was making public that the, the funding structure between what it takes in from the licensee, what it gets from the government, wasn't enough. And they were going to have to, to put this levy on older people to re or to introduce a fee for people that have always managed to have it for free before. So I, I think that there's questions that need to be asked about how these negotiations have gone on. Uh, and of course, the, the government... Uh, needs to get involved um, to make sure that, that we can protect some of the benefits that our old people rightly in, enjoy in this country. Because your, your patronage, and this is very important to many people in the Tory party, mm. why have you gone for Sanjay Javid? What does he offer that the front-runner, maybe Boris Johnson, doesn't? Well, I think the country is, is pretty much sick of politicians. I think we've seen at the European elections, at the Peter Bavai election, that there's a, a bit of a plague on both your houses, on, on Labour and the Conservatives. And I think we need someone that can bring the country back together and will also make people look again at politicians. And, and Saj isn't a cookie-cutter politician. He's not from central casting. He's not, you know, Eton and Oxbridge. He's an outsider uh, that was born into poverty. His parents were immigrants. He's dragged himself up. He's used local services to do it. He's absolutely passionate about comprehensive schooling. He's passionate uh, about good schools, academies. He's passionate about local libraries. Um, you know, he, he, he did well for himself. And then he walks away from a lucrative career in order to give back to public service. He has a competency in government that we need to restore. He's worked in four different departments. Uh, and I agree with him on some of the big issues. I agree with him in trying to get rid of all this hostile environment language at the Home Office. I agree with him in making sure we're committed to the 0.7% of foreign aid and he, he won't monkey around with the definition. I agree with him that the way in which we improve the future for everybody in this country is to why get schooling you, right uh, and further education okay. and technical colleges. But why don't you uh, support Boris Johnson when so many of your colleagues are racing to do that? What is it about Boris you don't like? Well, look, I'm not here to slag off any of the other contenders in this contest, and, and I know you'd like to lead me down that way, Piers, but I, I'm not <laughs> going to go there. This is too important. You know, the, the country is in it, it, what's nearing a political crisis, and it needs people who are sound, who are solid, who've got a record that they can stand on and be proud of, and the vision to take this country forward. No, and so and that's why I'm backing Sajid. And, yeah. and I have to say, just if you just let me finish, I had so many conversations with colleagues who were trying to triangulate who's the best person to back to stop another person or or who's yeah. got the best chance I, and I got so sick of it I just decided you know what I'm going to do I'm going to back the person that I want to see as our Prime Minister I'm going to back the person that tells a story about a modern Britain that I want to see well, and make... I want to back the person that I think is going to be the best for the job you and that's what I've done You make a very very articulate passionate case for Sajid Javid but I think a lot of people will think in order to break the deadlock over Brexit you need a committed 100% passionate Brexiteer at the helm, and Sajid Javid voted Remain. Isn't that a problem for him? I think what's less of a problem is what somebody did three years ago. It's what someone's going to do now to break that deadlock that you talk about. And Sajid's plan is, is practical. He understands that the EU27 have disbanded their negotiating team. You know, there's, there's not going to be a, a massive renegotiation between the UK and the EU27. That's why he wants to speak directly to the Irish government, to speak to them about what can be done to reassure them on the backstop issue because um, that's one of the big things that's holding this, th this up in the Houses of Parliament. It's one of the areas in which we, we could perhaps get agreement across the House of Commons uh, if there was a, a serious plan to, to look at that in the future. And that's something okay. that can be decided bilaterally between the UK and the Irish. OK, we've, we can't leave you without asking the question of the week, which is, have you ever taken illegal drugs? What's and that? If so, what were they? 
I have been on, on record before that when I was a, a, a teenager, I tried cannabis. Um, it didn't do very much for me, but um, in terms of other drugs that have been mentioned in this campaign, I have a soft, enough self-knowledge to know the last thing that I need is a, a, a drug that makes me louder or talk more, so I've never tried cocaine. <laughs> Ruth Davison, uh, we really appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much. And thank you for your support with our campaign mm -hmm. on TV licences. We think it's really important here at Good Morning Britain. So we appreciate you joining us. Thank you very much.